are like direct competitors in the industry. They even look the same. Things have really devolved on one particular side of my face. Well, that's not good. Hello, good morning. I am actually legitimately in my pajamas right now. It is truly morning and I am going to truly do a wear test today. Like going to work, doing a full eight hour day. That made it sound like none of my wear tests are real. My point was that I usually do them on weekends. I hadn't had enough coffee to make that a very clear point, but I usually do them on weekends where I'm just kind of lounging. This meant I was actually going to go to work. That was my only point. And it is going to be half and half. One side of my face is going to be the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation that we all know and love. Just to gently remind everybody what a practically perfect foundation it is. Hope I'm not setting myself up to fail. And also, um, the other side is gonna be this. Wow, that looks like the same bottle khaki. It's not, they do look really, really similar though. This is the Vape Hour, Vape Bower, Vapor, Atmosphere Soft Focus Foundation. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of interest in this foundation. I mean, people are absolutely private messaging me all the time asking about not just this, but how it compares to this. We're just gonna zoom you guys in. We're gonna put these on my face. We're gonna talk about the claims of each of these, maybe what some might find appealing, some might not find appealing. But yeah, so let's do that while I'm just jibber, jibberty, jibberty jowering. My Rob Bresney horoscope this morning said that I need to immerse myself in environments that are going to nurture my personal education in terms of things that I want to succeed in because the slapdash way that I'm used to doing things is not going to cut it if I really want to like go fight with the big dogs. It really hit me. Hit me right where it hurts, Rob Bresney. <laughs> I think that that was kind of a cheap shot. Every Aries does things slapdash, so. I already have my skincare on and my SPF on, and we're just gonna go in with a little spongy here. I recently, and by recently I mean yesterday, hello, started watching Mariah Leonard. Do you guys watch Mariah Leonard? She's a delight. I got that recommendation from Kiki actually, but I get the feeling that she's, you know, a legit makeup artist and that I could actually learn a lot from her. So that's the first step in my own personal development is I'm just gonna go binge watch Mariah Leonard and learn some stuff. So this is the Vape Hour. YouTube's not going to be able to index the fact that I am reviewing this particular foundation because I keep pronouncing it like a moron. So I got it in the shade S115. It is like their very light golden. And you can see, it. I'm pretty good, but once you get down to like my jaw, it's not ideal, but you know, that's what concealer and oh yeah, it's just makeup is for. This is not a first impression, you guys. I've actually been trying to really get my head around this foundation recently so that I could give you guys a really excellent review on it. And I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> it's a pretty frustrating foundation. Like I don't want to set up expectations improperly from the start, but yeah, I have been trying to make this work over the last, gosh, month probably since I got back from my honeymoon and she's been really difficult. I'm comparing it to the Ilia because I think that they get compared a lot, like I said, but also because the Ilia is just a much easier foundation to work with in my experience. Maybe you guys can watch what I'm doing, tell me what I'm doing wrong. We'll see, but I think that it's gonna be very valuable, even for a mental exercise for me, to be able to see them next to each other after a full day of wear. This is the Ilia, which I have in the shade Formentera SF1. And I think that this is like a really, really good match for me, especially when I don't have any kind of self tan or anything. Dude, I was watching Lauren Honest Beauty Review last night. I'm so out of my depth on the whole ingredients thing. Like if you really wanna like learn what ingredients do in skincare, she's a nurse, but like being a nurse doesn't automatically make you an expert in skincare. Like this girl has dug in and done her research. She's like telling me like the sizes of the molecules and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I'm kind of bush league over here talking about ingredients. I think that the main thing is just a truly insatiable curiosity. Like she is such a curious person. The girl has a, uh, she's got some serious chops when it comes to this kind of stuff. She's just generally incredibly curious. And I think that that really goes a long way. All right, so we are dealing with two very different colors. <laughs> When we set this, I'm gonna set it with the Lawless Powder because even though I have a lot of them that I'm trying, and I even have an Ilia, I wanna go with what I know and not 
screw up the potential science of the test by using something that is like a first impression. Also, I want to keep this uh, neutral in terms of what I'm using with it. So we're going to also go with the Lawless Concealer, right Sean? Uh, in the shade Sheets. It's the only one that I have left after going and returning like $170 worth of stuff to Sephora. I did get some comments. Some people were like, oh my God, they throw it away at Sephora. And I asked the girl at Sephora, she's like, no, we just send it back to the company. And then another girl commented, she's like, I used to work at Sephora. That's a nice thought and everything, but we don't send it back to the company. And I was like, well, that's not good. Um, I don't know, can someone clue me in as to like, I don't know, I mean, I guess that's expectation versus reality. They're supposed to send it back, but like, I guess some stores don't. I mean, when I worked at American Apparel, people weren't supposed to shoplift, but they went out of business because people were shoplifting so much. And by that, I mean employees. <laughs> Bust the tea. So I did also watch, I've been really watching a lot more YouTube recently. I watched Jaclyn Hill's return video, her triumphant return, you know, uh, talking, it was like a Q&A talking about her new boyfriend and everything. Here's the rub on Jaclyn Hill. Do I trust her for product recommendations? Not really, mainly because much like any other professional makeup artist, she can make just about anything work. Do I like Jaclyn Hill? Dang it. I like Jaclyn Hill. I think she's great. I think that she is bubbly and infectious. And you know, there's a reason that she has such a dedicated following. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I would not want to call myself a fan of hers, but she is, she's just, she is contagious. I mentioned that because I watched her do a Get Ready With Me where she literally sat there, probably just killing time, but she sat there with her beauty blender and just kind of pressed her foundation in for a while. Maybe getting some, I don't watch enough of her videos to know why. I just have to sort of infer. She, I, maybe to get some of the moisture out of the foundation before you set it with powder. I'm not really sure. She also sets her powder with a sponge, like Jeffree Star style, just like. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't want that much makeup on my face. So this is a pretty lightweight face of makeup all told. And now that I have got the concealer on, it's not that huge of a difference in terms of shade. So I am going to jump off and do the rest of my makeup. But before I do, I think I just said the word make herb. Make herb. I'm gonna zoom in and show you how each of these is sort of laying on the skin. In fact, I think we should put powder on and then I'll also show you what that does because that's when the vape hour really frustrates me. So, and by the way, I do know it's vapor. <laughs> I did not know that it was on me, but I do know that it's vapor. Give me that vape hour. The Ilia is perfect. <laughs> I love it so much. This is just one of those foundations that literally gets better the longer you wear it. So you put it on and you're like, that's nice. And then like you check in six hours later and you're like, what? Like it just, it wears in really nicely. We'll get there. But um, this one, I find that it just doesn't really like all the skincare that's underneath it. It's really temperamental and sensitive. I don't know if you can see it. Usually it's kind of right around here. It looks a little too wet and breaks up and that's what is going to happen when we put powder on it, no matter how careful we are. So let's do that. Let's also get this off of my lips. Don't want to be like James Charles in his apology video. You know, that's all he was thinking about the entire time. He's like, I have concealer lips. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> I do love a loose powder because even though I don't want to put a ton of makeup on, I truly hate the backwash situation that happens when you're wearing a dewy foundation and you try and redip your brush into a pressed powder compact. Even the Kiar Wise, when you're using the powder that's meant to go with the foundation, by the end of the compact or a little, you know, slidey DeLorean situation, the powder just gets packed down with wetness from the brush, no matter how much you clean your brush, because I am a religious brush cleaner and I just get frustrated with it. And honestly, I think that that's what's wrong with my Lila B bronzer too, even though when I do actually like aggressively swatch it, like I did in the Sephora haul video, you can see that it's still a really, really pale color. And one of you guys commented, you're like, mine's too dark. I'm like, come on, Lila B, <laughs> like pick a lane. I do think that like I used that essentially after putting, you know, a different powder product on, on top of a slightly, maybe tacky foundation and just the moisture gets back into the product. And that's why, <laughs> that's my long way of saying while I put powder on my face that I, I do love a loose powder. The application is so much less stressful. I don't have to fight with the packaging. 
she's performing. <laughs> and by that, I mean she's performing exactly how I expected. Let me show you. I might have to darken this in post, but I don't know why, but no matter what I do, this drags the product up right here. And the setting spray and putting everything else on my face is probably gonna help, but it's already moving the product around and you guys watched me. You watched me blend it. You watched me mash it into my face. And this side just doesn't, I mean, I have sunspots, you can still see them, but this doesn't do that. It doesn't like drag all over my face. So I don't think it's the powder's fault. I don't think it's my application's fault. This happens every single time I use the vapor. Every time, <laughs> no matter what concealer I use, no matter if I use a, a primer or I let my sunscreen sit on for 45 minutes, it doesn't seem to matter. It just always does that and I make me crazy. I mean, both of these, both of these will pick product back up if you're putting bronzer on or something like that, but the vapor is, it's worse. So yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Go put the rest of my makeup on and I will see you in just a moment. Hello, uh, yeah, I don't look that different. <clears throat> and that is because I remembered that I wanted to show you guys this on camera. So nope, not that, they look the same. They're twins, that's why. This is the Kosas Papaya 1972. It is the blush and highlighter that I described in uh, the last video on my channel as intoxicating, because that is exactly what this is. And we are going to um, put this on on camera because I promised you guys that, so. And da, 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 da. I mean, oh my God, be so careful, guys. She is so not playing. <laughs> Just gonna tippity tap that on there. In terms of investment and what you're getting for your buck, I don't know if you guys have ever used NARS Orgasm. Some people don't care for it, but it's not a particularly pigmented blush. I found that, you know, exhibit A from NARS would last me literal years. Orgasm, you really have to just like buff your brush in there to get any product on there. This is not the case for this. And I just think that it is just a very, very good investment. And I also have the well people under my eyes right now. I just love it. I know it's a little more exaggerated looking, but I love it. And then we also don't want to like undersell this gorgeous highlighter. It has really great blurring to it. So you put it kind of on that part of your face where we could all use a little blurring, am I right? And uh, it doesn't do any annoying stuff, accentuating lines or anything like that, so. I've been seeing people put highlighter right there lately. So I'm gonna do it, I don't know. So it's not the most like blinding highlighter in the world, but that's good because then you can kind of choose your moments for a blinding highlighter, you know? So just gonna, with a tiny brush here, add some of the PYT highlight in very strategic areas. And then, you know, we'll do mascara and everything, but it really comes down to like the most fun part, which is spraying my face with the Anami. I will before I do that though, so that I don't kind of spoil the results. We're going to get close one more time. So, like I said, when you put a little more makeup on top, everything kind of blends out a little more nicely, but you can see here, you know, we got away with it, Ilya made it easy, <laughs> you know? That's the difference. And you'll also see uh, wear-wise, hopefully we'll be able to see wear-wise. At the end of the day, I think that we will probably, I'm not gonna sabotage this or anything, but I think we'll see the differences pretty starkly after eight hours. So yeah, look at that just like really smooth finish. I really can't say enough about the Ilya foundation. In fact, while Vapor is frustrating, comparing it to anything to Ilya is kind of, it's unfair, but at the same time, they're the same stinking price. They're like $54, so sorry, Vapor. <laughs> you know, you kind of put yourself in the contender category and we're going to judge you as such, so. Let's do this. This is the Anami spray and it makes everything look better. Let's talk about Vapor. So yes, it's $54. They say you can save 10% if you schedule with the company and save. So you could get it for $48.60 if you became addicted to it. it. Says enhance your unique beauty with game-changing atmosphere foundation, fine art infused color and skin. So I, I made that emphatic because it's italicized for some reason. And skin nourishing botanicals deliver flawless, breathable, high performance coverage. Like I said, this is not first impression. I don't think that this is high performance. The Soft Focus Liquid Formula is a makeup artist favorite and offers a satin finish with buildable to medium coverage, sorry, buildable medium to full coverage. 
designed to balance normal sensitive and combination skin types. I do think that the ingredients are killer in this and I think that that's A, why they charge so much and B, why so many of you guys find this potentially appealing is because the ingredients list is so short and it is so good. The organic and wildcrafted antioxidant rich ingredients in this breakthrough formula include brightening camellia and vapors proprietary herbal enlightenment complex, another emphatic italicized frankincense tulsi and lotus to help soothe calm and protect ingredients highlights here yes it has mica in it we have castor seed oil which is you know i think it's a kind of a funny ingredient it's like you know it used to be something that you drank to make you poop and now it's like this thing that people use to make their like eyebrows grow so i don't know silica which is going to kind of hopefully absorb moisture over the day sunflower seed oil and camellia seed oil camellia seed oil is in like a lot of stuff that I use. I have always really liked camellias. This also has beeswax in it, so we're not vegan. Tomato, it's got tomato. I love tomato. We got myrrh. Tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and that's soy, so careful. Holy basil leaf extract, lotus leaf extract, cablin oil. It does look like there are no essential oils or anything in this, so that's cool. The claims are just that, you know, it's got great ingredients and that it is supposed to be high performing. Mascara break. And I've really given it every chance with using the same products that I use when I want other things to perform really well, just things that I know and love and trust. We've given her every shot, and honestly, I didn't want to get to the end of this video and just complain. So that is why we are comparing it against the Ilia so that you guys can really see like for perspective what good performance looks like against the vapor in case maybe who knows maybe it looks amazing at the end of my day but I have been wearing this for a while and it has been breaking up on me so we will see as far as the Ilia we have talked about it in the past it does have coconut alkanes in it but one of the biggest things that it wants to emphasize is it's very you know aloe -y. yeah it's got aloe mastic which refines the look of pores and naturally mattifies jojoba oil and marula oil. My skin really loves marula oil. Like honestly, get all the other oils out of my face. Marula oil and I get along really well. I know that there are different ways of attaining marula oil and some are higher quality than others, but this just has this amazing finish to it. And honestly, when you look at this up close, you just see everything kind of starting to sag, settle in, look a little bit cakey over here, and everything just looks snatched and flawless and blurred over here. Most of you guys have stopped watching by now. You're like, okay, I'm just gonna buy the Ilia. Yeah, I would say that the only thing that's potentially irritating, some people don't love aloe and some people don't love coconut, but the Ilia is vegan and the Vapor is not. So that's also worth noting. I know a lot of you guys, that's important to you. So, gonna wear this over my day. Gonna go put some real clothes on. Gonna go walk my dog. But this is the final look. Modern betch going to work. I will see you guys in like at least eight hours. So toodles. Hello. It's been about nine to nine and a half hours since I put this makeup on my face from first sponge. And there've been two dog walks, a uh, full walk down uh, around downtown and uh, a full day at work. Right now, everything looks pretty okay. <laughs> until I get close, in which case you will see. Things have really devolved on one particular side of my face. We will get into the finer points and the details and my feelings in a moment, but I want to zoom in and show you guys the reality of what we're dealing with first and foremost. If you can, for a moment, try and partition your brain because this weird thing happens where when one side looks good, it kind of makes you forgive the other side for its sins. On the whole, it doesn't look all that bad. When you look at that side, everything looks really good and normal and acceptable. When you look at this side on its own, everything looks very disappointing. Let me, let me show you. The surface on my cheeks, where my glasses sat on my nose all day, underneath my eyes, the way it kind of participated with the concealer, where it inevitably will dry around my, my mustache area a little bit, just I have dry skin there. Also the integrity of the color versus this side, which broke up so much more here, here, and here in a way that, like I said, when you see it kind of next to its friend, the Ilia, 
everything looks fine because you don't usually isolate one side of the face from the other when you're kind of analyzing it. But again, if you can partition your brain, if both sides looked like this, you would find this to be a disappointing face of makeup. Is it weird to say that I can feel the difference? I can feel the difference, especially when I'm outside. I feel the heat and the humidity having a different effect on these two makeups, these two foundations. I can feel this side feels locked in. It feels flexible. It feels lightweight. It feels a little bit lifted. And this just by comparison feels kind of like warmer and a little bit heavier, if that makes sense. I honestly feel like you can see that. I feel like this just looks more snatched. Am I crazy? I might be crazy. Let me know if I'm crazy. I mean, I think we all know I'm crazy, but even in this, in this particular, in this specific instance, whether I qualify as crazy. Also, I should really point out, um, if you're seeing it in the lens, which I'm sure that you are, I have no idea what the little red dots on my face are. I've been racking my brain. I've been looking at them really closely. They're in very strange placement. There's some on my forehead. There's some right here. There's one on my eyelid. I did not interact with anything red today. No food, no drink, no nothing. I have no idea what the little red dots are and it might just remain a mystery. Wow, like this is still so bright and then this has like disappeared. That's wild. I'm not gonna say that this is a terrible foundation. I just think that for the exact same freaking price, Ilya is a lot better. Granted, the, the vapor you get just like 0.18 ounces more. It's 1.18 ounces and this is one fluid ounce for your $54. But is it worth your 0.18 ounces more of a foundation that you don't like as much? You know, I'm not going to finish this bottle anyway. I'm not going to notice that small amount extra of product. Whereas Ilya, I'm going to continue using this. I use this all the time. I love it so very much. You can just see that it really is a performance foundation. I do feel like these two products are going for the same thing. They're going for the same customer. They're going for the same finish. They're going for the same wearability. They have a lot of the same promises. These are like direct competitors in the industry. They even look the same. I mean, for me, for the expectations I have of makeup, especially a $54 foundation, and for my skin type, just the reliability of knowing that at the end of nine hours, I'm going to look in the mirror and still friggin' love what I see on my face. I think we all deserve that. You know, especially if you're gonna come out of pocket that much for a foundation. So it's a pretty easy one, guys. This is a video that I have been debating how I was going to make for a while because again, I just didn't wanna crap all over this or just make a really wholly negative video about this foundation without giving you a better alternative. And so this was the best way that I could think of to give you guys an, a better alternative and to really show myself that it wasn't all in my head because I would wear them separately. And I was like, God, am I just having like really good makeup days when I wear this and just like not good makeup days when I wear that just because of like humidity or life in general and really just in the same conditions, wearing the same products on top and things like that, this just outperforms by a landslide. So I hope that this was valuable for you guys and for everyone who has been asking me to try the Vapor, what is it, Soft Focus? Atmosphere Soft Focus Foundation, compare it to the Ilia, which is better? I finally have an answer for you. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, please hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I love you so freaking much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.